So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to those who are accessing from Europe. Good late afternoon, Masa al khair to those who are accessing from the Arab world. Uh, good evening, I guess, you know, good mm -hmm. afternoon for those who are accessing from East Asia and good morning to those who are accessing from the US and North America. I will begin with four, six lines from Mahmoud Darwish, right, from Halat Hisar. So I want to begin, and Halat Hisar was written in 2002 in Ramallah. I begin with this. Huna, anda munhadarat al tilal, amam al gurub, wa fuwahat al wakt, kurba basatina maktuat al dhul, nafal ma yafal al sujana, wa ma yafal al atiluna al al amal, murabbi al amal. Welcome everyone to this event brought to you by SAWAS and the Sheikh Zaid Book Award. The Sheikh Zayed Book Award is one of the world's leading prizes dedicated to Arabic literature and culture. Since 2006, the award has brought recognition, reward, and readership to outstanding works by authors, translators, publishers, and organizations around the world. SAWAS is, of course, famous for its global reach and its commitment to the global South. SAWAS is a world-leading center in the study of the Arab world with a high profile in cultural, literary, and translation studies. This year, like last year, SOAS and Sheikh Zayed Book Award are collaborating in the organization of two events. The first one on publishing and technology in the Arab world took place on the 14th of September. The event was recorded and will be uploaded on both SOAS and Sheikh Zayed Book Award YouTube channels. They might have been uploaded already. Today, we bring to you the second event of this year on the detective novel and Arabic noir. We have with us three guests of honor, Saeed Khatibi, the winner of Young Author Award for Nihayat al-Sahra, The End of the Desert. This novel was published by Hashit Antoine Nofal in 2002. Nihayat al-Sahra is a work of crime fiction depicting the long-lasting effects of the Algerian war over future generations. The book stands out as a noteworthy addition to the scarce historical detective novels in modern Arabic literature that cater to younger readers. This is a quote from the sort of the prize committee. Said Khatibi is a writer, journalist, and translator working and living in Slovenia since 2016, he has published several translations, including the translation of the poetry of Katib Yassin, an anthology of Algerian short stories written in French, and the Encyclopedia of Arab African Cinema. He is author of four published novels, Kitab al Khataya, The Book of Sins, 2013, Arba'una Aman fi Intidar Isabel, 40 Years Waiting for Isabel, 2016. Hatab Sarajevo, Firewood of Sarajevo, 2018. He also published a book about his travels titled Jana in al-Sharq al-Multahiba, The Inflamed Heavens of the East, 2015. Said Khatibi has been active as a cultural journalist since 2006 and runs a cultural column published every Saturday in Al-Quds al-Arabi newspaper. In addition to winning the Sheikh Zayed Book Award, he was previously awarded the, the Arab Journalism Award, the Ibn Battuta Prize for Travel Literature, and the Qatara Prize for Arabic Novel, and has been shortlisted for the International Prize for Arabic Fiction. And we have with us also Dr. Jonathan Smalin from Dartmouth College. Jonathan is Associate Professor of Middle Eastern Studies at Dartmouth College. He's the author of Moroccan Noir, Police, Crime, and Politics in Popular Culture, which was published in 2013, and the forthcoming Prisoner of Love, Ehsan Abdel Quddus, Gamal Abdel Nasser, and the Politics of Romance, or as he just said, Melodrama. He has translated numerous works of Arabic fiction including novels by Ahsan Abdel Qaddus, Yusuf Fadl, and Abdel Ila Hamdushi. We also have with us Dr. Peizhen Tsung, Nas uh, 
who is currently an assistant professor of Arabic language and culture at National Zhengzhi University in Taiwan. She received her AM in Arab, AM, is that AM? In Arabic and Islamic studies from Harvard University's Department of Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations and her PhD from the Department of Near Eastern Studies at the University of California, Berkeley in December, 2021. Pei Zhen's research interests include Arabic literature, Arabic rhetoric with concentration on the theory of Abd al-Qahir al-Jurjani and Arabic language pedagogy. She is currently working on, a, com, on the comparative poetics of Arabic and Chinese elegies. So we have about an hour, 60 minutes to 75 minutes, but we can go beyond a little bit if there is a huge interest. In today's event, we'll follow the format of a dialogue, right? Um, I have introduced them and they will, Jonathan will kick off the questions to be followed by Peyton and we'll take it from there. So before I let loose of the speakers, our guests of honors, right, let me tell you a few housekeeping things. First of all, how to access simultaneous interpretation. For those of you who want to listen to the conversation in Arabic, go down to the bottom of the screen, you'll find an icon of a globe, right? That says interpretation, click on it and you will be taken to the Arabic interpretation. لمن يود الاستماع إلى الفعالية باللغة العربية أرجو الضغط على أيقونة باسم بعنوان interpretation. عندما تضغطون على هذه الأيقونة ستجدون لينك رابطة Two, when you want to ask your question, please use the function of question and answer Q&A to ask your questions. Recording, of course, this event will be recorded and will be posted on Sawas and Sheikh Zaid Book Award channels later. So anyway, let's begin. So let me turn to you, Jonathan, for you to start our conversation with Saeed. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you to Soaz and thank you to the Sheikh Zaid, Sheikh Zaid for this uh, wonderful opportunity and, and uh, wonderful panel. And thank you to my panelists and thank you to everybody who's come. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. Um, so uh, I am delighted to have the opportunity to talk about this really brilliant and trailblazing blazing novel. Uh, Ustad Saeed, I, I wanna start with in many ways, the the elephant in the room of Arabic liter of of Arabic crime and detective literature, your your novel contains crucial elements of noir fiction, such as a crime begins with a crime. There's an investigation or multiple people investigating. There's a police character and a lawyer, but it's unfortunately a rare example of noir or crime fiction in Arabic. Of course, there are some examples, but it's by and large rare. Why do you think the genre has been delayed in the Middle East and North Africa? Why has it been delayed in Arabic? Um, what are your, your feelings about that? Oh, uh, how are you? How are you, everyone? And uh, thank you for Shizai Prize to give me a chance to talk about my novel. So, uh, why? Why? That is a big question, you know? Everybody asks the same question always. <laughs> but, but let me to talk about the case of, of Algeria, for example. I don't think so. Because, in fact, for example, um, the crime fiction in Algeria, for example, began in the 70s. The real start, you know? With two writers, they have been very famous at that time, but they, they publish with their pseudonyms, you know? Not with their real names. Uh, it was Yusuf Khadr and Abdul Aziz Amrani. They published similar novels in Algeria. It, they have been successful, you know, at that time, but nobody uh, knows about them, their real names. Still now, we don't know them. Um, but they were not really writing, let's say, true, they were not really writing crime novel, but let's say kind of novel that supported the dominant uh, political uh, party of this period. So it was more political writing with some elements of readers, of course, inside. Uh, in Arabic literature, generally, I, uh, 
uh, I always I like this this um, this example. I we can talk about like Mahfoud with 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 his novel, The Thief and the Dogs. You know, it was great here. You know, um, it was also has been adapted in the cinema. It was also a great film. I I think so. It is it is old, you know, genre in in contemporary Arabic literature. Uh, if we go back, if we go back in the time, I think if you if you agree with me, one thousand and one nights, for example, was basically a thriller. I think because Shehraya, when you see him in the beginning, he was serial killer. He was killing uh, his wife every every day. A serial killer. You know? <laughs> we start uh, one thousand and one nights as as. As we are reading thriller in the beginning, so um, I don't think that um, the crime fiction or thriller was absent from Arab literature, but there were some breaks, breakups. Sorry, uh, sometimes you have one period, some some texts or some novels, and one after some years we have some break. So it's not. It was not in. We don't have one historical line of crime fiction in Arabic literature, but we have some periods inside. Uh, and we have also to say that the theory is complicated literary writing. Of course, freedom is discretion is is an important element. We can't talk about literature generally and particularly theory without freedom of expression. That is necessary. That is the first condition. In Algeria, for example, we risk we risk really writing thriller and the theory is also a novel of social criticism it's not just to describe crime or uh, you are looking who is the the killer now outside you have some other elements you have political criticism also uh, so when we live in country where the criticism is forbidden by the political system so thriller becomes something difficult to write or to think about so censorship is still there also that is also another element so censorship we still um, we still forbidden some books every year some movies also so there is an audience there is public there is readers there are a lot of people they want to read and you know the arabic world it's 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 a big market for foreign uh, uh, kind of fiction coming from europe or us or from scandinavian countries you know we have many translations you know in in arabic in arabic word that means we have audience but there are not enough good social political conditions so freedom of expression censorship yeah. could this be why we see an emergence of an algerian crime novel in the 70s at a time perhaps when there was more uh, you know, uh, freedom of expression in Algeria in the 1970s and the aftermath, of course, of independence. Um, I also wonder, um, does language play any role here? Because the 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 polar, the police mm -hmm. novel, the detective novel in Algeria, it it developed, uh, of course, in French. As you mentioned, you've got Yusuf Khadir in the 70s, but you also have... Um, um, uh, Jamal Deeb, Zahra Hufani, Ismira oh, yeah. Khadra in the 90s. There's such a rich tradition in French, but not Arabic. And so I, I would love to hear your thoughts on why do we have this rich tradition and development in French in Algeria in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, but not a parallel path for Arabic? Yeah, it's a good question. Everybody also, uh, also when we talk on, about in Algeria, I think we are the one of rare countries in the world. We can't say Algerian literature, but Algerian literatures, plural, you know, yes. uh, because we have in French, in Arabic, and also in Berber language. So we have the biggest, biggest area. So I think it's not, uh, it's not about the language, French or Arabic or other language. Uh, but Algerian crime fiction has developed thanks to the diaspora. Mm. So we have to to be to be clear. Thanks to diaspora, thanks to authors who live in Europe in the beginning. 
and particularly in France, of course, because historical connection between Algeria and France, who naturally write in French, they live in, in France, they, they write in French. It was, so the, the real starting of crime fiction Algeria started with writers, the diaspora, they live in France. It was not because of language, but because of your geographical area. Uh, and staying inside in that time and writing real thriller is difficult because publishers that don't want to bother censorship, they don't want to have problems with government or in, in bookstores or, you know, they don't want to invest money for book, it will be interdict later. So the diaspora, which gives, I think, a new life to the thriller in Algeria. Um, so it was really kind of, uh, uh, they, they have been in Europe, they have been in France, they have been connected with another literary uh, society. They discovered something new and they bring it inside. So it was not about, to, to return back to your question, it's not about French or Arabic, but it's diaspora who uh, participated really to develop uh, crime fiction in Algeria. I love this. I love this this perspective that the language is really not significant. It is the question of diaspora. It's coming from someone who is living outside of Algeria. So does your own experience of living abroad have a connection with the the interest in writing crime fiction or writing noir? Oh, by contradiction, I wrote this novel in Algeria also. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it in a... No, you know, <laughs> You know what? Now I started to write in Algeria, not all, but, but uh, yes, yes. Uh, when, when I am in, because I go often in my, my, at, at my home, my home country or my home town, of course. Uh, but when you are inside, it's not the same when you're abroad. You see differently, you know? I see it more clearly when I am outside. You know, I'm inside. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to, to write. Um, people they don't accept criticism, you know. You don't have to criticize uh, uh, their uh, culture or their life, you know. They they they, they think everybody is, is is good, everybody is nice, and <laughs> they don't accept it. So, for me, my my from my own experience, yes, to travel abroad, it it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot about to to see the the my history, my history of my country differently. So it helped me a lot. And also, it gives me some kind of freedom that I will not have it in Algeria. Of course, uh, if you write something that doesn't, um, that the, the political system doesn't like, they will not do anything to do, but you will lose your job, for example. You will have some problems. You know, they will not tell you this in direct way, but we have some experience. Some the writers, they, they suffered a lot with them. So, since uh, I am relatively free, yes, I can write now freer and more and more and more. So I defended my freedom, my own freedom. So, and uh, it was the it was necessary to be, to feel free. I don't say you know it's difficult to to give right definition of freedom, but I was free in my imagination. Uh, I don't I don't practice no self censorship on myself. That's it. It's. It's a necessary point to to think to to write um, a crime novel. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so obviously, October nineteen eighty eight is a, a pivotal pivotal moment in modern Algerian history, but it's also where you anchor your novel during you know your novel during this period. Mm -hmm. Is there something in particular about that historical moment? That lends itself to noir, to crime, mm. to investigation. Well, you know, uh, there is no so much uh, books or or audiovisual material about October 5, 1988 in Algeria. For me, it was really major event. It could be hundred movies about and hundred books about, you know, because October five, uh, it was the the first most tragic moment in Algeria after independence. When uh, at that time there was not, you know, uh, 
nobody think that one day could Algerians killing Algerians. We have already 25 years from the independence. Uh, we think that we will make great country. We dream, we dream, we dream, we dream a lot, but we are doing nothing in reality. And one day, one day you wake up and you have hundreds of victims in the street. Um, at that time, I think that the I we need hours and hours to explain why we, we it happened. You know this, but I will just to say briefly that at that time there there was not single murder. It was not just uh, one crime. Okay, no, uh, but hundreds against hundreds of Algerians, hundreds with guns with with, with, with I don't know with the. Uh, with somebody they, they come with uh, with with knife and everything to kill other agents in in public in the street everybody watching everybody and everybody wants to kill everybody it was uh, some some tragic moment like you are in the war and uh, uh, after hundreds of victims kids teenagers adults everybody was uh, be able to be killed in that time. Even kids 13 years old or 14 years old has been killed in the street. In in my case, for example, in my level when when I have main character, Zakia Zagwani or Zaza, she, she was young, you know, she was also dreaming. She wants to live, she wants to be happy. And one day she she is killed. Because a lot of people or young people in the same age like her has been killed in the same time for me Zakia it was just metaphor of this generation uh, maybe metaphor of Algeria also <clears throat> because uh, after 5 October 5 uh, we killed also the dreams of those who freed the country from colonization and uh, to come back in the past so or in your question in the street, there were manifestations, protests. There were victims. We know them, but they were never investigation. Mm. We don't know the. <laughs> nobody has was thinking to make investigation who killed who. And nobody. We have just victims. We know them, but we don't. We don't made any investigation. So in my novel, I tried to answer one question. The biggest question: How did we get there in this tragic moment? That is, is easy to describe what happened that we can find also in maybe in some some books of history, but not necessary to tell me what happened, but I want to to understand why it happened. Not the protests or it's people in the street, but what what is the reason to make people at one day in the all the country in the same day, it was no internet at that time, no Facebook, no connection, no thing that even telephone. To call somebody, it was difficult, you know. It's not 88, not easy to find the telephone in the street. But in the same day, all the people in all the country, they are outside in the street in front of the police, army, everything, and hundreds and hundreds of victims. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have one, one final question uh, uh, before we move on, which is, I'm very curious about research, your research process. And I've, I've heard you mentioned uh, else, mention elsewhere that archives are outside of Algeria. If you wanna research Algerian archives, you have to go to France. But one thing I'm, I'm curious about, uh, you know, in my own work is that I'm constantly navigating um, or trying to find material which is not in an archive. And I go to magazine markets and newspaper markets and or just, you know, old sellers of this and that and out of the way places. And this for me shows that even if there isn't a good archive, there's still um, a, a public interest in the past in newspapers, magazines. And I'm wondering in Algeria, even if there are no archives for your research, are there still people and places to find newspapers, magazines, and other materials or artifacts from the past? Was that part of your research process or, or has it been in the past? Of course, it's part of my 
with my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you said newspaper is market. No, it's not no, no market. <laughs> you know, it's this kind of archives. You can find them at somebody at his own. You must to know him. You must to know somebody. He will connect you with him. It's really complicated inside. But yes, I I can find some of them. I, I, I can find. Uh, and also, yeah, yeah, mostly of archives of Algeria, they are still in France. I don't know why. I hope that one day could be returned back to Algeria. But we still uh, we still have to go in some some institutes, you know, in some centers of archives in, in France, in Paris, or in the, uh, in the south um, near Marseille to to check and. You know, you are not able even to take pictures. But you have to check inside with a screen and just to to be there inside. You don't have right to to take screenshot or something. So you have to go personally there. So uh, it's still a difficult question of archives in Algeria. But also, uh, what we have as archives, some centers, we, uh, as Algerian, we don't have access. You know, mm. I don't talk about archives in France, but in Algeria, it's difficult to have access to to check them. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you so much. Yeah, before we turn to Peyton, there's a comment that I'd like to read to you because it's about the sort of the context, right, of the emergence and development of uh, mystery or mystery novel or police novel, right? And we have from our audience, Amrita Shodan. I hope I'm not butchering your name. It is suggested that crime fiction in English is a conservative genre where the outbreak of crime and its solution functions as social ca catharsisism, where the social fabric is torn asunder and then restored by the work of a detective or other intelligent gentleman operator. This has been linked to the disruption caused by the coloniality imperial experience, Dickens and others, for example. Perhaps this specificity of the British experience suggests that no one should not expect crime fiction of this sort to appear in other societies where the experience is quite different. So that's an interesting one. But now let's turn to the novel itself, the fabric, you know, the composition of the novel, and let's turn to Peyton, who will sort of like um, take part in this conversation with Saeed. So Peyton, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Oyam, and thank you for this opportunity um, to participate for me as participate as the um, intellectuals. And thank you for um, the event. Um, Ustaz Said Khadibi, um, my question will focus uh, more on the novel itself, as uh, Professor Oyam said. Uh, so first of all, it's kind of like a follow up discussion to the question that Professor um, Smolin were like addressed earlier that about the time that you pick for this novel. So at the last, like the final section of this novel that one of the characters, should I mention his name? <laughs> okay, <Awesome>. Kamal. <laughs> okay, so Kamal encounters a demonstration that occurred on October 5th of 1988. And I think you already mentioned about um, the reason that you choose, you chose this specific era. But um, I would like to know if you um, intend to create a, um, a dialogue between the events of 1988 and the Arab Spring. Oh, mm -hmm. in, the media, uh, in the media, always we have some kind of, uh, of sentence that we repeat without understanding. Always they say the October 5, 1988 with the, with the Azure Arab Spring. Now it's not true. It's not true. Uh, maybe in the image you can see that, but uh, when people they went in the street outside, they didn't. Um, they didn't want to change the political system. They didn't say this. They didn't. It, they, they were really dominated by the 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 single party at that time. They went in the street simply because they were hungry. In that time, it was uh, the same as other. Other as to as to countries uh, connected with with Moscow or USSR at that time, uh, socialist of course. Uh, it was a period of um, big economic crisis. 
the price of the oil fall down, no money for the no money for the budget for the state. And when you go to the store to buy, you don't have nothing, no milk, no oil, no nothing to even with your money you can buy nothing. It was the same I think in Hungary and in Romania. But they didn't protest before. Actually, it was the first one. So I am not sure to to compare October five to Spain, huh? but it's for me it's society revolution. I prefer to compare October five to uh, Berlin War. I think because between October five and Algeria and Berlin, when they it, it fall, it's one year exactly one year from one year and one month. Uh, the 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 first moment I, I remember the book of Fukuyama when he talked about the end of his story. He started to talk about the end when the 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 socialist part it, it fall down. But I think the end of his story started in Algeria. The first protest the, the biggest protest against socialism started in Algeria before in Berlin. Yeah, thank you. And you mentioned about the fall down, like the collapse of the socialism in Algeria. And um, this leads to actually to my second question about the title of the novel, the Nihayat as Sahara. Um, like actually, when I first read this title, um, it gave me like I was interested, like how a Sahara has have its Nihaya. So yeah, um, do you think it's a uh, optimistic? prospects of uh, for some solution or the end of a particular circumstance in Algerian society uh, about the title yeah like the title like the yeah, end yeah, yeah like a, a yeah. metaphorical uh, we, we, can, we can have many interpretations of the title you know often geographically the novel taking place in one uh, small town near the south of course geographically we can see the atmosphere of the Sahara, how much is hot water. We can see, the, we have the, the same feeling. Uh, the name of the hotel, it takes part because uh, the most uh, events of this novel took part in one hotel. This hotel for me is the, is this picture of Algeria. In this hotel, we find all Algeria inside. And the name of this hotel is Sahara. And the end for me was also is the end of one history and beginning of another. Because after October 5, we have another actually different, uh, two different periods. We, we, we have been from 62, the independence until 88 in, in, um, single parties. It was really very hard period. Then we opened the door. Okay. We opened the door for a few years then. Uh, black ticket started and theories and everything, but uh, between uh, before five October five and after October five, the, the end of his story and the beginning of another one. Can I come inside? Uh, excuse me, Pedro. I'm just I'm just thinking about the desert itself and the sort of the, the the multiple meanings of the desert in Arabic writings, right? So I'm thinking also of uh, Al Qasida, for example in which the desert journey is very important. And you know you can argue that on the desert, some sort of transformation happens, right? And then you have something new that emerges. So that's one. And the other one, as a Libyan, someone who is very sort of like uh, uh, keen on Ibrahim al-Kuni, cool. mm -hmm. a desert is also a sort of alternative community, like where like once upon a time, there was a a, a different vision of universe, of culture, of civilization. And I was, I was wondering more about sort of the, your desert, right? I mean, you have a hotel that is Algeria, but outside is a desert and there is Nihaya the Sahara. There is the end to it. Is it the end or is that something else going on? Just, you know, tell us a bit more about your sort of like imaginary yeah, you know, I was born and raised in the Sahara, in the South, you know, and uh, I I don't agree really with this uh, romantic opinion about the Sahara, romantic vision, but it's beautiful. Now, now the Sahara today, I talk about my kids outside in Algeria, for example, it's a space of all kinds of violence. Uh, 
uh, you know, it's very really difficult to live there. It's not because of the weather. You know, uh, all kind of mafia, all kind of crimes. You can live. You can. You can see that for many years in Arabic literature, also abroad, that we describe the Sahara as beautiful space, you know, space and romantic. And for me, it's really colonialist idea. Uh, it starts with some Orientalists, not all of them. Orientalists, they want to describe, because for them, they, dis they discovered the Sahara the first time. And it was different in that time, of course. But since many years, the Sahara is is the, the stage of all kinds of violence that you can imagine. Very much the, uh, Ibrahim al Kuna's desert, right? Ibrahim al is, is, a, is a place of violence and confrontation. And exactly. Conflict. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I may, I'm teaching Ghassan Kanafani's Men in the Sun in the this sun. afternoon. And of course, the, the, the desert is a place of suffocation, right? Um, and so weaving in this kind of literary reference here, I think uh, we, we can't forget Hassan Kanafani in this respect. Absolutely, yeah. Peyton, yeah. back to you. Oh, yes. We talked about uh, the hotel already. Yes. And um, yeah, you talk about the hotel already, and I would like to know more about um, the characters um, like the voices of the novel. So the characters are also narrators of this novel. So um, the result is like a, multi a, mul a multitude of voices. So please tell us a little bit more about your thinking about narrative voice and the effect you were trying to achieve. Uh, you mean this technical choice to make a lot of voices inside? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay, how, how to start? <laughs> because there are lots of it there talking inside. Okay. So I will I will yeah. because I, I am always connected with the past you know, because also it's really is um is crime novel of course but also historical is crime also okay novel. So uh my start is October five, okay, nineteen eighty eight. In that time we have only uh single party rules the, the country and everything. It was political conditions very difficult. Um, for example, if you don't have one card that you are uh, like membership of the party, you can't get any position at work or you can't have any job. You know, just like this. It's the same as other socialist countries. That means at that time, we have only one TV, one radio. Everybody, they dress the same. Everybody, they eat the same, you know? Everybody is similar in all the country, you know. I was sitting at the beginning to write this, this novel with one narrator, only one person. It could be more easier for me. But if I do this, I will be in contradiction of the situation. People, they are under pressure of this political system. They want to talk, they don't have to talk. And I will also do the same. I will I will make the novel with one voice and I will attempt others to talk. I choose to make several narrators, several people talking inside, to respect their their wish to talk because in that time you know what people they wish they wish just to be to have the the microphone in the TV or the radio to talk. You know when you live under under such society under such a political system. Maybe you forget that you are hungry or something, but you wish to talk. You now some people they don't know this wish for people they live in uh, such political situation. The the only thing that I can give to these people, to this generation, I give them the right to talk. So that is why I decided that everybody has right to talk in this now, because they were they 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 were many years um, under single party and they don't have right even to protest. It was forbidden really to go. If they find five people, just five, in the same place in the street, they took them in the, in the prison, in the jail, because they will think that if they prepare any protestation or something. So I I decided to give all characters the right to talk. The only thing that I can help uh, for them. Yeah. And is this related to the Arabic like um storytelling tradition? Like one followed the other to complete like a story. Yeah, everyone yeah. gives like one element of the yeah. everyone give an element and at the end is the reader who will make those presents yeah. you know to understand yeah. all yeah. 
So everyone help help adult, and it's like um, you know, it's like we have one group, you know, of of, of speakers. You know, and everyone mm-hmm. give the information and mm-hmm. to make all in the end like pyramid of information to know what happened from the independence of Algeria and then October five. Yes. Yeah, and also, um, could you please um, tell us about like the the role of cinema in this movie? Because like the characters mentioned about the cinema and like the visualization in this novel. Yeah. So I have also another element in the novel is one another novel, British novel, uh, The Sheik, of Edith Mudhul. Uh, it's a great novel, you know. I like it, and also it. I always would describe it as a romantic novel, but it's a thriller also. It's a story of kidnapping. Is one British woman has been kidnapped in the Sahara of Algeria. So my novel, The End of the Sahara, takes the same place where it was. It happened the ship in the same geographical area, the same place. First, and this novel it has been one of the first biggest success of Hollywood because it has been adapted in the cinema. In it was the Rodolfo Valentino as main character there. It was black and white movie that time without uh, without speaking. It was in uh, in nineteen nineteen twenty something like this in the beginning of the last uh, century. It was the, the biggest success of of uh, of Hollywood at that time. And the movie is about Algeria. You know, I was really attracted by this story. How the biggest success of Hollywood coming from my area. You know. So it's for me it's interesting to talk about that. So I, 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 I have all during all this novel, we have the shadow of the ship. Everybody talking about about the movie or about the novel, and even the novel will be the reason to that that one character is going to be asked by police, and then this novel is making big problems inside. So, uh, but there is another reason. Um, this novel, it was Orientalist novel. She described another origin, the the beginning of the center. I wanted to just to to have like dialogue of this novel to tell her, yeah, okay, you you describe, I will describe to you another Algeria, and I I will leave the reader to to judge in the end. You know, it's it was inside is one dialogue between two novels. One is British and one is Algerian, but they. Both they take place in the same uh, area, geographic area. So in eighties, also the only uh, the only thing that people they could forget their their own life, their problems, is to watch movies. Before the terrorism uh, came and uh, black decade, uh, we have a lot of cinema theaters in Algeria. Then all they closed them, you know, after terrorism. So cinema, it was the only reason to to escape from your reality at that time. That is why people they go to watch movie not to uh, to enjoy, but it's it's some kind of uh, feeling to to escape your reality. That is why they watch a lot of. And if you check, also they prefer uh, foreign movies, not local movies. Because local movies, they are also under censorship. They don't show the reality, so they they want to watch something different to to forget their own life. Yeah, and this actually leads me to uh, another question to like to dig into more about the character. So first, I would like to know, like you meant, we talk about the movies, and then um, the character Ibrahim, he actually emerged as the sole. Uh, male character in the novel who shows a um like appreciation of literature and film and arts in general but he works as the owner of a video rental store and he's um like men focus is actually on the rent of porn so um does he speak uh for the arab like the algerian intellectuals if he speak what he speaks- oh, does he does he speak for Arab or Algerian um, intellectuals? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I started the novel with the first chapter is Ibrahim, the first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was like a mm-hmm. 
but also he was loser. You know, in uh, in that time, it started when you know when you have economic, the first time Algeria um, had economic crisis. You now uh, the state doesn't government has not able to control the the situation, and the first time in IT, the black market developed. We see in the even Ibrahim he will he will buy one. It was a gift from one of his friends in the black market, in the in the Lama. So, when the black market started, when the state fought, the first loser is the intellectual, educated people, because traders or other mafia they will come and they will take your place. So, during all the novel, we can see Ibrahim as the only one who is educated, who is graduated, but he is the only loser. Because in such kind of society, we don't accept you. You are suspected since you are educated and since you are, you are suspected, you know. We don't trust you. We prefer to trust uh, somebody uh, who is uh, selling drugs or selling in a store or something, but we don't trust somebody who is educated. You know, to be educated in that time in Algeria is really suspected, you know. Uh, we believe on, on some theories of conspiracy and something like that. So during all the novel, I want just to, to talk about such generation of Algerian intellectuals. But in the same time they are the, the most loser in Algeria. Yes. Yeah. As we talk about the characters in this novel, I I feel like every character in the story engaged in like um illicit activities. Like they make mistakes, like ranging from lying or hashish smuggling to murder. So why are all these characters um in this novel flawed? Because the society was like this. They have the picture of their own <clears throat> own 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 social groups, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. When you, you live in one area or a society that is, for example, we see all the, for example, even Ibrahim, he's um, like, uh, he had videos of everything because he was not able to have a job with his diploma. And everybody, we see them, they are without job. Even if you are, you have a job, you have a job because you have a job because you know the, the, the manager of the leader of this society or this company or this this uh, uh, office or something so we live in some kind of society there is no job there is no hope also. Uh, and all they did to live we have one character he was he was really appreciated by Ibrahim because he went to France and he successfully in France everybody he wants to immigrate so in such society, what we expect, we expect, of course, crimes, we expect uh, drugs, we expect hash. Of course, that is, that is a human reality. I didn't, I didn't uh, create nothing, it, it, it ex exists like this. Yes. And we talk about like the people in the novel, they commit crimes. And then um, is there any particular reason to pick um, Kamal as the murderer? If any reason to make Kamal murder, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one reason that I talk about during all the, because this took me a lot of work is the no, no punishment. Because Kamal he lived under protection of Maimoun, the, the 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 manager of hotel, and he committed many crimes before two kids Zakia, and never has been uh, had or uh, take or. Uh, or receive any kind of punishment. He felt like he can, uh, everything is allowed for him. You know, uh, that is also psychological theory. I didn't read this from my imagination or the fiction. Uh, one of my questions of in this novel, how, uh, how to become killer? How we, somebody in a normal way who has ordinary life, and one day become killer. That is one psychological process. And I have a lot of uh, inside, a lot of chapters about Kamal because Kamal is one of the important characters inside.
from his childhood until he became killer. How he is the only son in the family, and uh, the, the youngest one, and he was under protection of Raymond. A lot of things helped him to think. He was young to think that everything is allowed. Whatever he do, he will never be or he never have any punishment. He has this, like self confidence to do anything. And and then after what happened with Zakia Zakwani, it was also like blackmailing him with money and everything. So he did. Even he did by mistake. He said after that that he, his intention was not to kill her. But he did. He did this. Uh, this thing. So it was really, if you turn back to the novel, it was really a lot, some long paragraph about the, the like psychological, psychological chances of his character from childhood to become a killer. Yes. And also felt like a lot of um, emotional intensity happened in for the characters, especially, especially for Kamal. And my last question um, goes back to um, Zaza. So he, uh, she engages in singing and some romantic attachment, and then he, uh, she just um, like commitments, and then she gained um, a lot of like adoration, but she is ultimately um, silenced, and she um, met her death at the hands of the people who actually loved her before, like formally. So, do you think of Zaza like a symbol of Algeria? Or why do you uh why did you decide to make her the victim? I didn't decide to make her the victim. Mm -hmm. I am really well, I'm sorry, I am sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, um yeah, of course she's metaphor of yeah. Uh I think um in October in October uh five, nineteen eighty eight, uh, we don't have just uh, victims instead, we have Another corpus, another invisible corpus is Algeria corpus, you know. It was one country has been killed in the And um, Zakia, yeah, it's metaphor for of Algeria. Uh, because when the, the period of of uh, 80s, the, the also started the, the religious radicalism now, then we have Black Decade, 10 years of of bombs and of killing every day. The first target of radicalism, the first target is woman. Just to be a woman, you are enemy of radicalism. Just to be a woman, don't allow it. Just you are a woman. They have big problems with women. So uh Zakia, because here yeah, is a symbol also that after Zakia you know thousands and thousands of women that has been killed in Nigeria. Before Zakia, also a lot of women there. Um, we don't have really like law to protect women during marriage or after divorce. You know, she is always victim. Nothing to protect her. So Zakia, she defended himself. Yeah, she, she she had also problems in the family, rape, you know, and after the rape, she she hates all men. You know, she. She hates them and she keeps contact with them just depending on her what she wants or interests or benefits. But she is also a symbol of this uh, Algerian woman after independence. Also. Uh, during the colonization, during the period of the liberation war, uh, the woman is here. We like the woman. Okay, they are good. They are fighting for the country, for liberation. But since the country is independent, all the women has to go back home. We don't see them in the public place or in the street. Or... That is the reason why Zakia is really metaphor of this generation of women. Thank you, Peyton. I think we come Thank back you. to you, Jonathan, <laughs> for uh, Ms. Kilkhitam. Last question from the panel, panelist. And then we open the question. We we open the forum to the audience. I think I see three questions already. So Jonathan, fantastic. 
Um, so I, I do want to keep be mindful of the fact that this is a novel and that novelists have a writing process. And so I'm curious about your writing process. How did you begin to put together this massive collage of a novel? Where did you start and how did you expand from there? You want me to tell you my secret, or <laughs> that is my secret. <laughs> yeah. Said, said, I think I think what you can do is really talk about your vision for the future of you know either the detective novel in Arabic or Arabic noir. Now I am joking. I will answer his question. Then I will talk, <laughs> of course in your question. No, no, no. Of course. Now I don't have uh, you know uh, the writing is changing always. You know, you start one chapter and second and. After that, and then you stop and you change. It was not, um, you can't make plan. You can have some idea, of course. But the process, of course, first searching, as you said before, archives, that is, it, it took a lot, a lot of time for me. It took a long time also. And uh, writing. And the, the second part is a lot of uh, psychological searches, you know. To understand the psychological of because it's not just to say the for reader that somebody is killing somebody you know for me psychology is, is more important you know before writing you, you have to understand the psycho why we kill why but we, we explain somebody that some reason they are fine no it must be something more deeper more inside inner in, in the in the in the human psychology so um, I I divided all my characters, you know, in my like files, you know. I I made like I can't say writing plan, but psychological plan. Yes, I I I I I'm had to to whatever they do, it must be logical with their psychology. It not be logical with the history, but with the psychology, because everyone has different history than second one. So am I allowed? to abuse my position as chair and ask you about psychology and psychology of the criminal. But I'm more interested in, for example, what you think of Nagib Mahfoud's psychology of the, uh, not terror, is the interrogator, right? Um, someone who, who, who punishes, right? Uses uh, torture, torture, torture prison mm -hmm. sort of prisoners. I mean, what, what, what do you think of it? This is just out of curiosity. What do you think of Nagib Mahfouz? And the other one, uh, it, let's start with there. So I, yeah. Yeah, I like so much Nagib Mahfouz, you know. I read, uh, I, can, I can read the same novel a uh, lot of times, you know. Okay. <laughs> one novel, yeah. I can read it a lot of times and every time is different feeling, you know. And his Freudian yeah. psychology, of course, and Sarab, right? Yeah. Exactly. In, uh, you know, Nagim Mahfoud is for me is one of uh, of idol. I think is maybe some people they they took Nagim Mahfoud just in they took Nagim Mahfoud only in this uh, realistic um, writing about uh, area about things in, in in Cairo. But for for me, uh, how he was really you know smart to make connection between between characters. Uh, transition between event to an event is, is for me is to read Nagim Mahfoud is a great uh, creative writing course. Mm. You know, it, you don't need to go to school to to for creative writing, but you have just to read with your your with passion, with with love and with passion Nagim Mahfoud. Yeah, I also think of Nagim Mahfoud as the best theories of the novel. Right, he's the best. If you want someone to find a theory of the novel, Nagi Mahfouz is, is the person who will give you a theory of the novel, especially yeah. the Arabic novel. Now, speaking of Mahfouz, there's a question from our audience, right, that sort of like brings Nagi Mahfouz to mind as well, right? His Maraya. In the way of writing, this is from Sami Habati. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. We notice a sort of polyphonic dimension in each chapter where every persona is the narrator of that chapter. Is it a game of mirrors by the writer, Maraya, Labet and Maraya? Uh, does this reflect a different way every part of the novel conceive, conceives the truth? Right, so this is from another question. Uh, so this is the second part of the question from the same person. The end of the novel seems to be open would we expect a next part of the novel in the future, a sequel? Oh, thank you, Sami, for this question. Yes, it's a polyphonic novel because, as I said before, uh, October 5, 
people they were just they wish just to talk that i i try to give them the the, the right to talk to express their, their their wishes to express what they want uh, so i want to that everybody has everybody has the right to talk because before october 5 nobody has the right to talk about the end yes it's the end and uh, i think uh, i don't expect another another volume of this novel no i don't expect but uh, yes because our history also it doesn't end you know it's our history is also open we doesn't know the end of this uh, of this past so uh, for me i don't think that i will i will return back for another uh, volume for this stuff so what's next said what is next i am I usually I I don't know because as I said before the process can change you know you are writing something I am still writing of course but I don't know what is could be the result or fruit in the end but I am still interested by my my the history of my country of my area in North mm-hmm. Africa and uh, what is happening there I am um, I am making a lot of uh, searches and uh, uh, I want to be something. Uh, to work harder you know to take your time that to be you know to be in the same level what the, the reader expect from you mm. great now this is like this one is a very light question from Mariam Sami right and this reminds me of my childhood right have you read any algaz right uh, i guess th- these are cartoons right and translated uh, uh, which is a famous detective genre in egypt the, the famous Al Ghazban, I don't know whether you remember these, right? In one major series, five children and a dog solve big crimes like murder, kidnapping, and smuggling. So, this is just a question Have you read Al Ghaz series? I think these were translated. Al Ghaz? Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the. Yeah. Um, like, it might be too young for it, you know? When I was growing up, I read those. Sami. Uh, 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 I, I don't remember the author, but in, in Egypt they have a lot of experience of yeah of crime fiction. But um, some of them they were some only commercials. But but for me one of as I said before is um, the thief and the dog dogs. Sorry for Nagi Mahmoud. We don't talk a lot about this novel. It was a great novel for me, and it was one of the great uh, thrillers in Arabic literature. And I am really I am I I'm. I read a lot of Egyptian literature, of course, mm. and uh, I, I like the uh, Egyptian uh, uh, literature. Sometimes I don't remember the name, maybe, or the title, but I read a lot from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Okay, any more questions? Jonathan, Peyton, if you have anything like you'd like to add before we conclude today's session? Said, anything you'd like to say? Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jonathan, Peyton. Thank you very much. It was a really wonderful panel. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we had so much. I, I had mm-hmm. such a fun time as well. What happened to society left? Okay, so everyone, thank you again for coming. And thank you, Saeed, for letting us interrogate you. And thank you, Jonathan and Peyton, for taking part in this interrogation. So I'll see you next year, I hope. All right? See you. Bye. Thank you so much again for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Seth.